All right, guys, so a lot of people ask me, do I really have to count calories in, in order to lose weight? I'm gonna answer that question because I think it's super important that we understand why even people even talk about counting calories, right? First thing I wanna say, when it comes to counting calories, like if you don't count your calories and you're just eating to eat, you're probably overestimating that you're either eating enough or not, or eating too little. When it comes down to it, you know, they talk about people who are not tracking their food or not counting their, their calories. And typically when you're estimating, you typically estimate over about 400 calories a day and what's crazy about that is that that's going to add up so if that's 400 in a day over a week that's 2800 calories you're almost a pound of fat or a pound of weight more right so the idea is that when you want to think about counting calories it is important now not all calories are the same and at the end of the day it's very important to understand that when you start looking at calories the real big thing is that if our goal is to lose weight or body fat or change your body composition to be healthier the important thing is to understand how much calories you need to maintain your normal body state and then what you need as a deficit in order for you to lose the body fat that you're trying to lose so you can look better and be more lean. So with that being said, it's important, okay? And it's important because when we look at calories, it's like, do you know how many calories are in, that are in a palm size or a piece of chicken breast, right? I think the biggest thing that you have to come take away from it is like, do you even know that, right? Do you even know the sauce that you're using or the carb that you're eating? Or do you know how much fat is in different meals? And so the point of calorie counting isn't necessarily just to be really scientific, but it's also so you can be aware. I think the biggest thing when it comes to my clients and the aha thing is that when they start to look at the food that they're eating, because they didn't look at it before, because they're not just picking up labels and reading the back of the labels, they're literally looking at it going, oh wow. You know, the biggest shocker, one of the biggest shockers when you look at calories is that, especially when you're using apps like MyFitnessPal, which could be really great for you to use, because they're free too, is that, you start seeing things like sodium pop up and you're like, damn, there's so much sodium and stuff, but you didn't realize, right? So the idea of, do you have to count calories? Yes, yes, you do. And I'm saying this to you because when you're unaware of what is in food and how much calories there are, that's a huge part. But the bigger thing is, is we talk about macros, right? This is the funny thing. When you talk about counting calories, doesn't make you lose weight. Like I literally put it into my fitness pal is not going to like, you know, uh, manifest you less weight, right? You're not gonna just drop weight because you put it in there. But what it does is helps you make healthier choices. It makes you more aware, right? And there's things that you can do to pivot because you might be used to eating a certain food that you thought was healthy. You know, on the other video that I did before, I talked about how these low fat products, what they'll do is they'll pump in more sugar and then you'll look because you actually are doing my fitness pal. It, it like wipes away all the confusion and all the distraction of like what flavor it is and all this kind of stuff and tells you, hey, this thing has a ton of sugar in it, right? Or this thing doesn't have much nutritional value and you're like, okay, I'm not gonna do this anymore. And the goal is, is that when you start to do this in a healthy way, it's just to make sure that you make better choices. That's really what calorie counting is about. And yes, because you're more aware and you're making better choices, it will lead to weight loss. It'll lead to you making those changes in your life. But most importantly, you know, I think the big thing when it comes to counting calories is the habits that are built behind it. I think most people get confused with losing weight and they think it's like, oh, it's my meal plan. My last coach gave me a meal plan and you know, it's the workouts. But reality is, it's like, it's the habits. Like we are like habit creatures, right? Like sometimes we're just doing things, not even thinking about it because it's so easy because it's a habit. Well, unfortunately that stuff is good or bad. So depending on what the habit is, you might have to look at it and be like, mm, right? So if you're eating foods, like say you get up in the morning and your first thing is to get you a coffee and you dump you some creamer in there and you maybe, you know, dump some sugar in there. You have no idea if you're not like measuring that or understand what you're doing, you have no idea what that concoction is turning into. Now you might be like, oh yeah, man, I'm getting all this energy. Well, caffeine's gonna kick up, sugar's gonna kick up. Yeah, you're gonna have that. But is that the right choice? And these are the things that I think start trying to change your mind and start to have you think like, this is a good habit for me. You know, I know all you coffee people are like gonna hit me in the uh, comments and be like, like, dude, I have to have my coffee every day. We'll have another conversation about coffee, but the bottom line is, is like counting calories and understanding what you're eating and what kind of nutritional values in food is super important. When it comes down to losing weight, like the like the simplest scientific thing is, is like if you could, you need to burn more calories than you consume, which doesn't mean that you don't eat. So for those people that are like, you know, um, <laughs> coming into to to this idea, and I'm sorry I laughed. I just I, I when I think about this, it's the funniest thing, it's the craziest thing to me. I mean, maybe you didn't notice, or maybe notice with other friends, is that most people come to me and they say, man, I'm I'm ready to get on this this fitness journey, and I'm ready. And I go, okay, and I talk about you know what they've been doing to eat. They're like, oh no, I've been watching my food. I'm eating clean. I used to say that. I used to be like, I eat clean, bro. Like I'm. This is what I do. The reality is, is that when I thought that, I was like, what what did that mean to me? I was like, oh, I'm not eating burgers at you know McDonald's or Burger King or wherever. 
you get it from carl's jr maybe i'm packing like a sandwich or whatever maybe i'll have some chips but you know not too bad but the reality is is like because i didn't even know what the hell i was eating it, i wasn't really eating enough food and typically what happens is that people think in their head is that in order for me to lose weight i have to eat less so then when you're talking about counting calories, they're like, oh, how much calories should, should I consume? I'm like, first of all, do you even know how many calories you consumed before? And they have no idea because you're not counting it, right? And the reality is, is that most people are just bef before even getting into a weight loss program are not eating enough. Even those people that are, have done diets before, you know, I know some people who are doing intermittent fasting with keto. So not only are, when you intermittent fast, right, you only have a small win window of time to eat, which, you know, you can't eat all day. I mean, eat in six, seven, six hour window. They're also doing keto, which we're removing a complete macronutrient out of your whole diet. So you're reducing calories, right? So you're supposed to pump up your fats and pump up your proteins. So when you really look at it, you're like, well, there's a reason why counting calories is important, right? When you get to a place where you're counting calories on a normal basis and you actually start to understand what you're eating and you get to a place where you're actually aware of these foods, there comes a time where maybe counting calories is not important, but on your fitness journey and you're trying to learn and you wanna develop new habits and you wanna become a better version of yourself, you're really actually helping yourself build better habits and you're building better awareness about counting your calories and watching uh, what you're eating and watching what nutritional value you're getting out of the food you're getting, right? If you see that we talked about in another video where I talk about trans fats, if you start seeing a whole bunch of trans fats in your diet, it's probably because you're eating a lot of processed foods. And not to, again, not to knock processed foods, but there's some that are good, but some of them have high trans fat, right? And you have to make sure these manufactured things are not in your diet because again, anything your body doesn't recognize as something that's good for it, that it can digest, it's just gonna store as fat. There's a few different ways of looking at how to count calories or methods that could be used by other coaches. One way that coaches do what use um, counting calories is by giving you a macro goal, right? Giving you a macro goal is going to tell you like, hey, what's your protein, what's your carbs, what's your fats? Um, you know, I'll throw in water in there too. But those three things um, are primary the things you're going to look at. And with that being said, your coach or when you have macros, it's telling you how many grams of the food that you should eat. Now, the reason why I emphasize grams of food or grams of protein, carbs and fats is because if we just looked at calories alone and you just ate calories, it could be a ton of fat. It could be a ton of carbs. The reason why you wanna do this is because you wanna have a healthy balance to make sure your body's getting enough protein, making sure that your body to repair itself and to help you stay satiated, fuller, longer, right? And then at the same time, um, looking at carbs because we wanna make sure not only we're we supporting the energy output that we have, but we're also making sure that we're not eating less carbs because a lot of people do this low carb thing because they believe that that's gonna help them lose a lot of weight. And that's for another, another story, but the bottom line is to make sure you know where the carb, where the calories are coming from instead of just looking at calories. So with that being said, you know, the biggest thing when we start to look at counting calories is like, and looking at macros is that you have, based on your, your um, body fat, your height and your weight, your age, you're gonna be given a uh, certain remedy depending on what your coach does. But when I do macros, I really wanna make sure that based on the goal, based on where you're at, and based on making sure that these are things that are actually going to make sense that my clients can actually accomplish, right? Telling somebody to eat 240 grams of uh, protein uh, right off the gate, you know, because, you know, they need to, you know, they want to build muscle and all that kind of stuff. Like this is going to be a challenge for them, especially if they haven't eaten enough, right? And I think that's probably one of the biggest scares for most people is like, you know, when they start to realize, oh, dude, I have to actually eat. And when you start to look at your protein goal, you're going to be like, oh, heck no, right? So think about this, like, you know, an average, an average man is about 180, 190 pounds. And if we just say on general basis, hey, eat one gram of protein per your body weight, that's almost 200 grams of protein. So if you break that down and you're looking at it like, you know, an average chicken breast is probably like, I think it's like four, uh, excuse me, like 40, 40 to 45 grams of protein. And if we take that and we take 190, right? And we divide it by um, 45, you gotta eat 4.2 chicken breasts a day. And I know most people, <laughs> they're like, it's a lot of chicken breasts, dude. Now, of course, can you eat other things besides chicken? Yes, you can. Can you get it from others? Can you get proteins from other sources? Yes, you can. But just to give you an idea how much protein that is, and it's important too, when you think about it, to have a variety of sources of protein so you don't get like burned down on it. So with that being said, this is another reason why we wanna count macros, but we also are counting calories so we understand how much of those 
those macros we're getting to make sure that we're reaching our calorie goal. Typically, so break this down is that you might be assigned a calorie goal to maintain your current body weight. You know, you you need you know 2,800 calories, right? But in order for you to to be at a deficit, we need to put you at let's say a 20% deficit. So if you take the math and you take 28. 100 calories and you uh, times that by 0.2, you're actually reducing 560 calories, right? So at the end of the day, 2,800 minus 560 calories, now you're at 2,240 calories. This is where your where your macros are gonna be broken down to. All right, so when we're when we're looking to find out how many calories of protein that we get, get in a daily basis, based on the fact that we have 2,240 calories for a day, we're gonna take 2,240 and multiply that by 0.4. Okay, that's gonna give us 896 calories. Now, remember I told you for every gram of protein, it's four calories. So what we're gonna do is divide that number by four. And what that's gonna do is give us 224 grams of protein. Now, the cool thing about this is that because we're, um, we're gonna be using a 40-40-20 split, which is gonna be 40% protein, 40% carbs, 20% uh, fats, the carbs are going to be the same. So you would do the same math if you wanted to. You can take 2,240 divided by four. It's 896 calories divided by four. It's going to be the same thing. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is, is that when we talk about fats, fats actually um, account for nine calories per gram of fat, right? So if we take that same number, 2,240, and we're going to multiply that by 20%, because we only want 20% of our calories to come from dietary fats, right? Good fats for you, okay? We're gonna get 448. So it's a lot less than um, our proteins and carbs. Now, the good thing is when you do this, now you divide this by nine, right? 448 by nine, and what do we get? 49 grams of dietary fats. So this is gonna be very important to understand that the energy source from fats are really high. And I've talked about this before, understanding that good fats, like don't get scared of fats, right? And one of the things I'll tell you is that as long as you're getting good fats, it's gonna be good for you. But because fats carry twice as many calories, you have to make sure that you're not eating too much of it, right? Now, one of the things I'll say is that, you know, one of the sneaky things is like, if you don't, know, for breakfast, you're like, hey, I wanna, I wanna eat eggs, right? You know, I had my wife on a program and, you know, she was eating her eggs in the morning and uh, she was tracking her food and she was like, oh my God, I keep going over my fats. And I kept looking at it and looking at it and I was just like, babe, well, you know, when you eat eggs in the morning, you know, you're eating, you know, two, three eggs, like the yolk that's in it is all, is all fat, right? So it's like almost seven, or eight grams and so if you do that she's like 21 in just on one meal right so that was the way we we fixed it and got her on some egg whites and here and there she'll actually eat some of that but she was struggling like i can't get this fat goal i can't stay under my calorie goal so when it's all said and done and we start talking about this the reason why i'm even breaking this down to you is that counting calories are important because making sure that you understand that in order for you to lose weight generally speaking you need to be at a calorie deficit to know that calorie deficit you need to know how many calories your body needs in terms to lose weight, which means you need to know what your maintenance calories are. Like how many calories do you need to be at the steady weight that you currently are? But if you wanna drop weight, which I wanna focus on body fat, the goal is is that we need to be at a 20% deficit, nothing lower than that. So not eating, um, you know, skipping meals, um, you know, again, I'm not against any of these diets as long as you understand how to eat correctly um, so that you can make sure you're hitting your goals. But the bottom line is, is to make sure that you're at a deficit, a minimum of 20, anything less Less than that might be a little too much and you get your your body back into this food storage more. But bottom line is, is knowing this will allow you to make sure that you have the proper macros, making sure that you're hitting the right numbers every day. And if you track it, instead of guessing, right, you have something that's going to guide you. And through that process, as you're actually tracking it, one of the biggest takeaways from this is for you to know is that if you start seeing yourself not making progress because you're, you know, you're, you're kicking, you're, you're killing in the gym, you know, you're hitting your cardio hard, you know, you're eating, you're, you know, eating all your meals and you're like, it's just not budging. Well, the the fact that you actually track this stuff, we can look at it and make the adjustments because you know there's other things you can do in order to break through those those plateaus you're having. And keep in mind this: when you hit a plateau, does not mean that your body isn't working. It means that your body has actually adapted to the changes that you made, and that you just have to make another change. So that being said, you know, does do, do you need to count calories to lose weight? Yes and no. But the bottom line is, it's going to help you to be better educated and make better choices. Be a aware to make sure that you're eating enough calories or macronutrients based on your your uh, your goals so that you can make sure you ach achieve the goal. If you have no idea what you're eating, you have no idea if you're eating enough or eating too much, 
how are you going to reach your goals? So I'm going to tell you, I'm a big advocate of it. Um, I do have different ways to build my clients into a place where this becomes a habit, where they understand how it works and understand how they can use this information to be powerful, to allow you to continue crushing your goals. Because at the beginning, when you start out and you're on a journey and you're trying to figure out what to do, you know, there's so much stuff out there. And the bottom line is like stick with the basics, build better habits, focus on educating yourself and find out the things that like, don't try to do these trick fast things. Just figure out the things that are going to help you sustain better habits. Once you do that, the habits are going to take you all the way to the goal. And if you need some help, the reason why you have coaches and coaches like myself is because then I can look at those things that you're eating and I can actually guide you. I can tell you, Hey, like you're doing a great job. Don't worry. Just going to take time, right? Or make this adjustment. Maybe you're not eating enough protein. Maybe they're eating too many dietary fats. Maybe you're eating way too many carbs. Bottom line is, is that having that information, that data allows you to be able to make the changes you need. Having that data allows you to be guided and coached in the way so that you can continue crushing your goals. And at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, you're going to develop and learn all these things so that you can go ahead and live the rest of your life doing great things. Not just this quick thing where somebody just gives you a meal plan. You never track the, you never track and the only way that you can eat and only way you can feel like you're losing weight is just by following this meal plan. That's not what I believe in. I believe that you need to be self-educated and learn so you can be able to, to guide yourself. So with that being said, guys, counting calories is a great thing. And I think it's, you know, it is something that is sometimes can be tedious. It's not always necessary once you get to a place where you have educated yourself and know, but in order for you to get on this journey that you're on to get yourself in a healthier state, yes, I guarantee that it's going to help. I hope you like this video. If you can, please, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, and, it, and give me a comment. You know, my goal with this is to give you a direct answer. I don't want to dance around whatever else. And I want to provide value to you that's going to allow you to be able to provoke you to do things. Like I hope this video allowed you to look at what you're doing, give you a better idea of how to approach your nutritional goals and understanding how to, to look at calories and macros so that you can be able to go out and accomplish the goals you want, you know, without having to continue to struggle and struggle. So with that being said, I hope you guys got a lot out of this video. I want to tell you, thank you for watching it. Thank you guys for subscribing and liking the video guys. Again, like I always say, you know, when it's all said and done is, is really focus on building habits. And one of the things I'll say to this is that if you're, if you're struggling, you're in a position where you're just like, you know, this information really helped me, you know, reach out to me. I offer an opportunity for you to, to have a conversation with me. And what I do is really break down these roadblocks and things you're having in these these myths of these things that you're dealing with and really customize a, a, a blueprint, like a strategy for you. And that's the thing that I really focus on is making sure you have clarity and make sure you have a clear strategy so you can have a clear, direct line to your goal. So guys, have a great day. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.